Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to God is Speaking. Today, we're going to continue on our teaching on prayer. We've done already two parts. This is part three. And the, it's not because there's some special formula to prayer, but there are scriptures that relate to prayer, tell us how we need to pray, what's effective, there's examples. So it's not that there's some type of magic formula, but there are some things that are being taught uh, that are unscriptural, some things that um, are being brought forth that don't line up with the word of God. And so we know that there's much teaching on people declaring and decreeing certain things. And some of it is so totally unbiblical that people are declaring things that they have no control over. It's not the will of God. Um, they haven't sought the will of God. They're not praying in agreement with the word of God. And so there are some different things that we are addressing that are uh, lined up with the word so that we make sure that we have an effective prayer life. What does it take? You know, we can't just come to God any type of way as we are continuing to live in or, or practice sin. We can't just come to him without faith and expect that things are going to happen. Um, we can't come, it, you know, before him and, and demand him to do things that doesn't line up with his word. And we have to realize that the, all the power is his. And so we uh, have gone through a couple of parts, but today really I just want to focus on some of the benefits of prayer because if we don't realize there are benefits to praying and, and really that we need prayer like this is a relationship with God so that we are constantly talking to him and hearing from him but also there are certain things that we need to realize that we are just going to fail at in this world if we do not have a prayer life there are some things that we have to realize that you know we're not going to overcome or bypass or be victorious in areas of our life unless we have a prayer life we need the strength of God to operate in us we need to seek him. We need to listen to him. We need to have communication with him. And so the first verse of scripture is a verse of scripture that we've gone over several times, but I just want to remind us in Matthew 26, verse 41, and this is when Jesus and the, his disciples are in the garden right before he is arrested. And we're reminded, you know, that he had asked them to watch and pray. He comes back three times each time they were asleep. Each of the, uh, each of the gospels may uh, give us a little bit of extra information depending on who's telling the story, what their observations are. But at the end of the day, he asked them to watch and pray. They went to sleep. Each time he went back, they were asleep again. And so what he says in Matthew 26 and verse 41, is he says, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And what we have to remember in our prayer life is that we are in these fleshly bodies. There are things that we have trained ourselves to do. We have trained ourselves over the years to do the things our flesh wants to do, say what our flesh wants to say, go where our flesh wants to go. We have to have prayer in order to be strengthened so that we can overcome temptation. He says, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, which this is shown to us after we read through and we find out and when you go through the different gospels that after um, the enemy, Judas and, and the soldiers come in there for Jesus. We find Peter who cuts off one of the soldiers' ears because he's reacting and acting out in the flesh because he had not been praying, because he wasn't being led by the Spirit, but he had allowed his flesh to take over. And we need to realize this is not just about us falling asleep in the natural, but when we are spiritually slumbering, spiritually asleep, like just being lazy and not praying and not in the Word, we are spiritually weak. And when when temptation comes, when trials come, we tend to act out and react and respond in the flesh. And so we need to watch and we need to pray. We absolutely need to pray so we don't continue to fall into temptation or enter into temptation. And then we look in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, when Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not faint. It says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. The word faint meaning quit or give up. And so we need to remember, you know, there are things that we face every day in life. There are trials and tribulations that we're promised that we're going to have. And if we don't pray, we will quit. We will give up in the midst of whatever it is we're uh, going through. People give up on their faith. They stop going to church. They stop reading the word. They stop trying trust in God. They stop moving forward. They get stuck and stagnant. They, they begin to just fall apart in the midst and just faint and give up. Why? Because they don't have a relationship, because they're not communicating with God, because we're not praying. And so Jesus says that men ought always pray 
and not to faint. Always. That means praying without ceasing, continuing in prayer. And so then we find out, okay, we need it so we don't enter into temptation. We need it so that we don't quit. And then in James chapter 1, it tells us in verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to men all liber to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So here, one of the benefits of praying is that when you need wisdom, we don't know what to do all the time. We don't know where to go, which direction to go in. We don't know God's next plan, his next step. The Bible says if you lack wisdom, if you don't know, then you ask God, he'll give it to you, but you got to pray. And it tells you that you have to pray in faith when you continue to read it. Ask in faith, nothing wavering. And so this is what we need to realize. When we don't know what to do, when we're at our wits end, when we need to know direction, when we know want to know what God's principle is for something, we want to know what his plan is for something. We want to know what direction we need to go in. We want to know what decision to make. When we want God's wisdom, we have to ask. And that's prayer and we have to do it in faith. So you can't just go around in worldly wisdom them because Jesus or the Bible says that the word the the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God and so it's good to study it's good to no different things in the world to have an education, that's great. But if you don't have the wisdom of God, you have absolutely nothing. And so then we are looking at not just um, so we don't enter into temptation, but that we don't quit. And then if we want wisdom so that we can move forward, so we can grow and be the men and women of God that God purposed us to be, so that we're glorifying him, so we're walking by faith, so that we are walking in power and authority. And for that wisdom, we need to pray. Then in Second Chronicles chapter 32, verse 24, we're reminded, um, and this is also in uh, Kings, I believe Second Kings, and but um, this is in the book of Kings also, um, Hezekiah, when he was sick, and it tells us um, that in verse 24, in those days, Hezekiah was sick to death to the death and prayed unto the Lord and he spake unto him and he gave him a sign. This is when we're reminded in Kings, when you read it, that the, that the Bible tells us that the prophet Isaiah comes to him and tells him, you're going to die. You know, God says to get your house in order. But the Bible tells us Hezekiah turned to the wall. He began to pray and he began to remind God that he had been faithful and obedient. And, you know, he began to pray and God granted him 15 more years. This is what we need to realize is that look, God is a healer. God can turn things around. He can change things. But some things require us to come to him and ask. Some things we need to come before him and we need to seek him and we need to pray and we need to ask and we need to uh, just trust him because that is something that no one else could have reversed. We know as we read on that he probably would have been better off if he just would have went with the original plan. But the thing is, is that he asked and he received. And so sometimes things seem like it's at the end and it's, it's impossible and there's no changing it and no turning it around. But we don't know if we don't ask. Sometimes things don't change because we simply did not pray. And so then we are reminded in Matthew chapter 15, um, verse 22, um, we are reminded, uh, it tells us this, this is a new King James version. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, him being Jesus, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. And so this goes on and tells us about this woman. And she comes to Jesus, and the disciples are trying to, you know, send her away. And Jesus tells her he's not there, you know, basically for her. He's there for, you know, uh, the, basically the children of Israel. He says, you know, uh, should I give the, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the bread to the, um, to the dog, should I, you know, you know, and she's saying even a dog gets crumbs from under the master's table. And so this is the thing is that he literally called her a dog. He literally um, was talking to her, you know, in a way that many of us would have missed the deliverance, the blessing for our child. But this is the thing that we need to remember is that intercession is powerful. This woman refused to leave without her daughter being delivered. She refused uh, to give up. And so no matter what the disciples were saying, which represents the church, no matter what it seemed like was being said to her or how she was being addressed, she wanted her daughter to be healed. She wanted her daughter to be delivered from the demonic um, spirit. And so she was willing to do whatever it took. And she was willing to look, call me a dog, whatever. Just give me the scraps. Just give me, you know, um, whatever is available. I want my daughter delivered. And we need 
need to understand the power of intercession. So many are going through with their children and the enemy has come to, the thief has come to steal, kill, and to destroy. And we have to realize that without prayer, many are being consumed and overtaken by demonic activity, uh, the devil's work to steal, kill, and to destroy. And so we have to be willing to stand in the gap and be bold as this lady that we are not willing to give up or give out. The Bible tells us, you know, when the disciples are trying to send her away, and then when Jesus tells her in verse 30, uh, 24, rather, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then it tells us in verse 25, then she came and she worshiped him and asked him to help her. And then it tells us in verse 26, when he says, it's not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. He said, I'm going to take the children of God's stuff and give it to somebody who doesn't belong to him. But that's when she just said in verse 27, she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And Jesus begins to tell her of her great faith. And her daughter was made whole that very hour. Listen, we have to stand in the gap for our children, for our family members, especially our sons and daughters. So because all that they're exposed to, if we're to watch and pray so we don't enter into temptation, think of our children, the sons and daughters that may not know the word or have a relationship with God and, and or may have, uh, you know, been exposed to all types of false teachings teachings and false doctrines and all types of drugs and alcohol and lies from the enemy have been blinded by the devil and somebody has to stand in the gap for them. This daughter was freed because of her mother's faith and diligence and prayer that she came to Jesus unwilling to stop, unwilling to give up. And so then um, we're almost done. We are um, just going to talk. I just want to uh, just look at the fact that with this woman, she not only prayed, but she was basically begging like a dog because when Jesus addressed that and said, you know, should I take the children's bread and give it to dogs? And then she said, even dogs eat the crumbs from their master's table. It's like she was already down and worshiping, but now she's at the point of pleading and begging. Now she's at the point where she's not even offended, but she's just, you know, sometimes we get offended at how the word tells us to do things. We get offended, you know, when the word is correcting us, we get offended. And then our prayers are hindered. But this is what we need to realize is that prayers are effective when we do them according to God's word. When we come in faith, when we come bold, when we come believing, when we come not getting weary and giving up, but we are, you know, just diligently seeking him and constantly praying without ceasing. And God is faithful. So now we see a daughter who was delivered. We see that we need to pray so we don't enter into temptation. We need to pray so that... um so that we can be healed, so that God can do what we can do, what the doctors can do. We need to pray so we don't quit and we don't give up. And the last thing that we are reminded of is um, in Joshua, um, we are reminded when, excuse me, <laughs> we're reminded in Joshua chapter two, how uh, Rahab, who was um, a harlot, uh, you know, she sold her body, she had a house, and, you know, she did a business that wasn't lining up with the word of God, but when two spies were sent there by Joshua, and she hid them, and she, and she protected them, and then her thing was, look, I know who your God is, we've all heard about your God, all of us here in our heart fainted with fear, we know your God who, you know, who uh, has delivered you, your God who gave you, you know, the kings into your hand, your God, we know know who he is, but she confessed God was the true God. She confessed him. And then she asked them, listen, because I hid you, because I protected you, you know, can you save me and my family? And this was her prayer. This was, you know, yes, she was talking to the spies, but it was God who honored her desire. And we need to realize that when we're praying, we have to realize God is doing things we can't do. See, she knew that Jericho was going to be destroyed. She knew that God was going to give it to his people. And what we have to realize is that if we don't trust God, if we're not leaning on him, there's nothing that can save us. There's nothing that can protect us. And so she asked and God 
honor that because she took care of his people. And because of that, all of those that were under her roof when Jericho was destroyed, when everyone was killed and everything was destroyed, her and her family under her roof were saved and protected. And what we need to realize is that we have to have relationship with God. She acknowledged who God was. And when we acknowledge who God is, that means that our life lines up with it. She acknowledged in the midst of her sin, in the midst of all of those around her who were living sinful lives, who didn't acknowledge or honor God, she decided that she was going to acknowledge and honor God. And she protected his people. And because of that, she and her household were saved. Listen, we need a relationship with God. And without prayer, there is no relationship with God. So we need it. It's a benefit to us, not to God. He already knows who he is. And he's already able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. So there's no lack in him. It's but a small thing, a light thing unto him. God is able to do all things. It says uh, in Job 42 and 2, I know that you can do all things. God can do all things, but he doesn't have to. And so we need to pray. Sometimes you have not because you ask not. And so listen, let's realize that we need this prayer. We need it so we don't faint, so we don't give up, so that we don't enter into temptation, so our families can be delivered, so our families can be healed, so our families can be saved, so that we can stand in the gap for others. We need it so we can gain wisdom and so that we can see the supernatural take place in our life. So we need to pray. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for all of those that are hearing, listening, Lord God, I pray that Father, we would just pray without ceasing and realize, Lord God, that we need you. We need to acknowledge you in all of our ways that you would direct our path. We need you so that we don't fall into temptation into the enemy's hands so that we can walk in deliverance so our family and loved ones can be healed and delivered and saved so that we can continue on the path you set us on so that we can experience your fullness. We need a relationship with you, communication with you. And so Father, we ask Yes, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you help us to hunger and thirst after righteousness, to seek you with our whole heart, to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. Help us to stay focused. Help us to stay steadfast and immovable. Help us, Lord God, Father, in the name of Jesus, that our minds are stayed on you and our trust, faith, hope, and confidence is in you alone. And so, God, we thank you for your continued good work, your love. And, Father, we thank you for the measure of faith that you've given us. So, God, have your way and continue, Lord God, the good work you began in us until Christ Jesus, we pray. We thank you. We honor you. We love you and it's in the mighty, matchless, powerful name of Jesus that we pray and say hallelujah and amen. God bless you. I love you to life. Don't forget we have a morning prayer, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday on Facebook Live and Instagram Live. It's Tony Brook Brown or Pastor Tony Brown. Join in with us in faith as we believe God for everything because we know that he can do all things. And with God, all things are possible and all things are possible to them. They believe. And so share this message with somebody who may need it, but also share the gospel with someone who's unsaved, somebody who's backslidden, somebody who is hurting. Be a vessel and an instrument that God can work through for the uplifting of his kingdom. If you want some prayer cloths or some, um, some, some con prayer confession cloths, which are really just the word of God that you are confessing and praying in line with God's word, uh, please uh, click onto the link below uh, christianrap.bigcartel.com and you can uh, get some prayer cloths, some prayer confession cloths, some scripture confessions, and just get it in on the inside of you. When you get this word in you, you begin to walk in the word more and more. It becomes who we are because God is conforming us into the image of his son. It tells us in Romans 8 and 29. And guess what? His son is Jesus and Jesus is the living word of God. God. And so to be conformed to his image, we need to be conformed to this world. I'm sorry, to this word. And we need to submit to it, but we can't submit to it if we don't know it. And so God bless you once again. I will see you the next time. Again, don't forget to comment below if there's something specific that you want to talk about as it relates to prayer, something that you want to go to scripture with um, as it relates to prayer that you would like for me to address. If you have any questions or comments, please Write it below. I look forward to hearing from you. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.